Hey everyone, it is October the 6th and this is what has changed in the past week. Probably the most noticeable thing is that the remix graph is now being returned when you're viewing an app or a game. So what this means is that we've now got this most remixed category here on the left. So you can see kind of which games have spawned the most derivatives. So this is kind of a cool way to browse around at basically what the most popular templates are on Koji right now. And if I open one of these and I scroll down, I can actually see a sampling of some of the remixes that have been made, and I can kind of traverse through the tree in that way. Um, I can also load them all on here. And if I open them, I'm also able to see uh, the parent app underneath the description here. So you can kind of browse around and start to understand like what's connected to what. I think there's going to be a lot of cool stuff that comes out of this. I was mainly concerned with, you know, getting the back end set up to compute this graph and store it and then render it. And then probably this week, expect to see some changes to kind of this whole discovery interface now that we've got some of this extra, more interesting data coming into this thing. Another cool thing is that we have the first sort of composable VCC type, which is the array type. So you can basically take any VCC and now turn it into an array and have, you know, multiple items in here simply by either appending brackets to the type definition in the VCC file, or if you want to do the longhand form, you can kind of wrap it in carrots like this. Um, and you can do this for any type and it'll render it as an array. You can also set array options and set a minimum and a maximum if you want you know, only a specific number of values to so see I can't add any more now, but if I remove it, I can. Uh, the definition for this is in documentation if you want to look a little more at it. Uh, this is going to be cool for, you know, some of these elements were like, like these enemies instead of having to explicitly define one, two, and three, just being able to have a list of them and let the person who's remixing upload as few or as many as they want. Um, yeah, some other minor things, kind of back-end infrastructure things. Deploying and development used to pull from the same pool of instances. So whether you were starting up a development server or you were deploying your app, it would all kind of suck an instance out of the same pool. We've separated those now, so deploy is a little more isolated from editing, which makes a lot more sense moving forward and is just going to be a lot more scalable. So probably won't notice any differences, but this does open up things in the future, like allowing us to parallelize builds on deployment. Last week we had Koji Dispatch, the real-time event broker that got some scalability updates this week and some infrastructure-y things. We're going to have some cool games featuring multiplayer coming out this week, so keep your eyes open for those. Those will be fun. The client-side SDK for Koji Dispatch also got some extra utilities for profanity filtering, because that was one of the first things we noticed when we had, you know, any reasonable amount of people join one of these multiplayer servers as people were choosing some not very good usernames. So uh, those methods are now just kind of convenience utils in the Koji Dispatch SDK. And you can also grab the latency um, from the Koji Dispatch SDK, so you can do some debugging and stuff like that. I'm still tweaking the rate limits a bit, but in general, we seem to be doing pretty solid. It, you can, right now it's set at 2,000 messages per client per minute. If your application supports fewer messages than that, you should do that because that's just going to be better for general application performance, but that is sort of the limit right now. And then if you drain those 2,000 messages, it basically just doesn't process anything until a minute goes by and it refills it back up. Other things, we got a Portuguese translation, so thank you to Wellington and Adriano for doing that. That's awesome. And thank you to Ian for submitting some documentation into the Koji Docs GitHub repo that is now live on the site. Reminder to everyone else that if you want to see Koji's interface in your native language or you want to contribute to documentation, the sources for all of that is uh, in GitHub, so feel free to make a pull request and yeah, see you in the next video.